Get happy for Jamie Brickhouse. I've always loved fur and old movies. Now to me, nothing is more glamorous than my favorite movie star, Joan Crawford, sipping a martini while wearing a big, boxy mink. Growing up in Texas, I was always the coat check boy at my parents' Christmas parties. <laughs> now, even though the thermometer rarely dipped below 45 degrees, all of the wives showed up in their air-conditioned Cadillacs and Lincolns and paraded into our air-conditioned house wearing the latest black mink, silver foxes, white rabbits. But the fur that fascinated me the most was old Lady Dorothy's then unfashionable black Persian lamb. It was unlike any of the other fur coats which it, with its strange squiggly pattern of, of raised satiny fur that looked like a coxcomb flower or the surface of a brain. And I remember thinking, I wish boys could wear fur. And then I moved to New York City. <laughs> Woo, yeah. So for the next several years, I was on a quest for the vintage fur of my choice. I would never buy new. And one day, I was at a flea market. And there it was, hanging all by itself on a chain link fence. <laughs> As if it had been waiting just for me, the holy grail of vintage fur, a black, Persian lamb. I paid $150 for it, another $150 to have it altered to fit me perfectly. I was as excited as a high school girl about a new prom dress. But I was not going to wait for any prom to wear that coat. No, ma'am. On the very first day, it was ready. I borrowed my boyfriend's sunglasses and wore that coat to the job I loathed. <laughs> Fur changes a person. I was immediately impossibly chic, sexy, and smart, and delightfully queenie. I mean, no one on the street would have mistaken me for a football fan. And I could not wait to show off that fur to my best friend, Mr. Parker, at our drink state that I had every day to help me try to forget that job I hated so much. <laughs> When I arrived, Mr. Parker was already two fingers into his martini. I, I walked in and did a quick model spin. Whoa, my God, he shrieked. That coat is fantastic. You look like Joan Crawford in one of her black glama What Becomes a Legend most ads. You think so? Thanks. Now, after that first martini melted into my body, I started to forget the work day of that hated job. After three more martinis, I barely remembered I had a job. <laughs> now, Mr. Parker eventually went home to his boyfriend. I should have done the same thing, but I was feeling too free, too sexy to waste my four martini high. Besides, I wanted to show off the coat at the Sodomite Resorts in Chelsea. <laughs> it was a hit at Barracuda. <laughs> Fabulous coat. Is that brain fur? <laughs> My grandmother had a Persian lamb. I adored it. Then I decided to up the ante with a wintry mix. Not what the weatherman called a mix of rain and snow, but what I called a mix of booze and coke. <laughs> and I headed over to the rawhide. Now, the rawhide was ostensibly a leather bar, but all were welcome. However, I can assure you that on that cold February night, I was the only one wearing a Persian lamb coat. Now, the place was packed because it was stripper night. So I placed my coat on the back of the bar stool as other coats piled up on top of it. And then I boomeranged around the bar doing the coke, talking to guys, doing the coke, talking to more guys. And when it was done, the coke, I ran back to the bar to get another drink. I lifted up a pea coat to get my coat underneath and... It wasn't there. Hey, I yelled at the bartender. I had a Persian lamb coat right here. A Persian lamb what? Ah, we didn't see anything like that in here. I ran around the, the bar frantically looking for it. Nothing. 
I ran out to the cold street outside, hoping that I would catch the thief casually sauntering away in it. Nada. So I went back inside, and I did the only thing I knew how to do in those days in a moment of crisis. I ordered another drink. <laughs> now, in the time it took me to finish two more martinis, I went through the entire five stages of grief and loss. <laughs> Denial, it has to be here somewhere. I know I'll find it somewhere. Anger, who in the rawhide would steal a Persian lamb coat? <laughs> Depression. I never even got to wear it to a party, much less the prom. <laughs> Bargaining, please, I beg you, if you bring me back that coat, I promise I'll never let it out of my side again. Acceptance, I guess it's gone. Guess it was never meant to be. Maybe I never deserved it. And when I finally sobered up about three years later <laughs> and realized the cause and effect between booze and loss, I never quite got over that Persian lamb coat until I was at an estate auction and I bid on and won a six and a half foot long chestnut brown ranch mink stole scarf finished with fur fingers. Now that stole scarf trumps the Persian lamb coat. Why? Because the previous owner had once been, and I bow movement you not, <laughs> none other than Miss Joan Crawford. <laughs>